So the FA24 engine's really been a blessing in disguise. On the surface, it's deceivingly similar to its predecessor, the FA20, which shares similar horsepower, torque, and engine layout. But it manages to set itself apart in ways that we previously could have only dreamed of, and it turns out what really matters is on the inside. In this deep dive, we're going to explore what lies at the heart of this new platform and turbo boxer engine from Subaru. From there, we can translate the data into real-world results from world-famous tuning companies and enthusiasts alike. Lastly, although this performance cake has a lot of icing, there are a few aspects that need a little bit of help from our aftermarket pros. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you for tuning in and welcome if you're new here. This is the Boosted North Media, and here we break down engineering, performance, and culture behind modern performance cars. If you enjoyed today's video topic, check out the rest of the channel after this video, and if this isn't your first time here and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Drop a like and leave a comment on what you'd like to see me do next, and with all that being said, let's get on to the video. So the FA20 and the FA24 do share a lot in common with each other, in fact if they were family they'd probably be first cousins. Both are turbocharged dual overhead cam, 4 cylinder boxer engines, and they're both featured in the WRX. Both have a 10.6 to 1 compression, direct injection, and have a horsepower figure roughly around the 270 mark. So where do the differences really lie? Well to start, Subaru bumped up the displacement from 2 liters up to 2.4 liters, giving it a larger displacement led to more low end torque and better responsiveness. More displacement produces more exhaust gases, and those exhaust gases help the turbo spool up much sooner. So the displacement mainly came from increasing the bore. The FA20 had a bore by stroke of 86mm by 86mm, a perfectly square setup. The FA24 bumps up the bore to 94mm while retaining the same stroke of the 86mm. This offered the potential for larger valves, improved breathing, and better peak flow. The horsepower was also increased even if it was only by three ponies. The real benefits are seen when you read between the lines quite literally on the dyno sheets. The dyno sheets show that the new platform features more power at a lower RPM and a better optimized torque curve compared to the FA20. Maximum torque comes in at 1000 RPM sooner than the predecessor and does not taper off like it used to. Another notable change that's worth discussing is the redline adjustment. The FA20 engine before the current engine redlined at 6700 RPM, while the current generation redlines at 6100 RPM. Subaru lowered the RPM to improve longer engine life as well as to reduce stress. Reducing the redline lowers bearing load, valve train wear, and the forces acting on the internals of the engine. Utilizing the low-end torque provided by the increased displacement, Subaru could offer to lower the RPM but still make the same power. Now the final point that we're going to highlight is the minor weight increase. Now at the surface it sounds like a negative, but the weight was increased for all the right reasons. Now the FA20 weighs 386 pounds while the FA24 weighs 397 pounds, and no, the FA24 didn't gain weight by going on vacation. The reason why it gained weight was thicker cylinder walls, a stronger block, and stronger internals. The added mass and structural rigidity may also reduce vibration and stress. All of these advances total up to the engine becoming an improved and future-proof solution to being a more powerful, more reliable, and more platform-applicable engine than its predecessor. Less vibration, less noise, and all the efficiency are only a handful of reasons of why this was a home run from an engineering perspective. But the most exciting part for car enthusiasts like you and I is being able to apply all these engineering marvels to big power on the dyno. Even though the platform has only been out for so long, I found three builds online that clearly demonstrate the potential of this new engine in real world application. Now our first build was posted to YouTube by Will Tune for Tacos, and in his video he tunes the brand new WRX equipped with Cobb Stage 2 power package. This kit includes a Cobb access port, front mount intercooler, carbon fiber red line power scoop, high flow filter, and an aluminum intake tube. After performing his run on the dyno, he came up with an impressive 295 wheel horsepower and 356 pound feet of torque. Our second build was posted by IAG Performance, sporting out a VBWRX with the following modifications. A Cobb front mount intercooler, Cobb Canflex flex fuel kit, Cobb Red Line Intake Package, IAG Spec High Pressure Fuel Pump by Nostrum, IAG Spec High Flow Direct Fuel Injector Set, and an IAG FA24 Big Turbo. 
After dialing in their custom tune, they landed on 450 wheel horsepower and 401 pound feet of torque. Now the final build being featured today is the one with the largest numbers. Aeroflow Dynamics on YouTube posted their VB and the video I'm taking the information from details a full price breakdown of their build. Although the build list isn't as clear as the prior two, I can confirm that they have the following. ETS intake, ETS front mount intercooler, aftermarket turbo, unequal length headers, and even though this isn't verified, it's safe to assume fuel upgrades. And the reason I say that is because they boast a power figure of 500 wheel horsepower in their rear wheel drive converted WRX. This small sample demonstrates the insane capability that's only been barely tapped at the surface of this brand new engine. In fact, IEG already makes a short block that's capable of handling a thousand horsepower. But even with all this potential, there are a few things you want to keep your eye on for when you're modifying your WRX, especially if you're trying to push the upper limit. The fuel system typically taps out around 350 to 400 wheel horsepower depending on your tune, as well as if you're running pump gas or E85 ethanol. Many tuners recommend getting an upgraded fuel system when you go beyond this point. Now another limitation factor is the stock turbo. The stock turbo only has enough huff and puff for around 350 wheel horsepower. Beyond this point you're sacrificing a lot of efficiency as well as the life of your turbo. 22 to 23 psi is typically the max limit you're going to find in this range. And another part I'd like to point out that's technically not part of the engine but it is somewhat related is the stock transmission. This is notoriously the silent killer for making reliable power. Usually the maximum amount of torque you can apply at this new engine is usually limited by the transmission because the transmission gives out a lot quicker. Third gear is the most common to fail and the only way to really fix this is to swap out the transmission, the most common swap being the STI 6 speed. Roughly 400 wheel horsepower seems to be the limit for the stock transmission before reliability decreases dramatically. So at the end of the day, the FA24 isn't just an incremental update, it's Subaru's way of future proofing the WRX platform and keeping the performance spirit alive. It's smoother, stronger, and more capable than numbers even suggest. We're already seeing tuners unlock its potential and they're barely even scratching the surface. I'm personally excited to see where the community takes this one, whether it's crazy high horsepower dailies or precision engineered track. Thank you for watching today's deep dive. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below what topics you'd like to see covered next. And with all that being said, thank you and see you in the next one.